Hi there, it's uh, Shannon from Audio Energy. It's been a few weeks, uh, but now we're back into it. Um, so why don't we look at part two of making trailers. Okay, so we're back and uh, it's been a few weeks. I've been working on some projects with uh, clients in January and, and as well as uh, February, March. Um, I normally do post-production for sound and, um, and film. I also do a little bit of band recording and um, independent artist recording as well. So I've just started my business recently, in case you don't know, I've started my business uh, about September, October last year, started setting everything up. So I'm in the very birth stages at the moment of starting to get ideas out and work ideas, uh, get business in the meantime and try to work and get things together. So it's a slow process, but it's well worth it in the long run. Um, Got some other ideas that uh, I wouldn't mind starting that I'll be looking at a little bit later. So uh, I'll, I might tell you them when I, I move along a bit further. But for now, why don't we look at setting up our uh, trailer. Um, I've used a video. If you haven't seen how we did all this before, just go to part one. But there are a few things in part one that I'd like to sort out in this one that I didn't do and should have done. So um, I'll be starting off with that this time. Um, so I've basically got uh, a night sky and motion rotation video, it's a time lapse, free stock footage um, available on YouTube. I've also laid down some basic music tracks and uh, we're going to have a bit of a look at that and, and see how they put it together and we'll, we'll do this successively for a, a number of episodes uh, until we get it things sounding nice and right and looking really good. So from here, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are, uh, we have our project open. And there's one or two things I'd like to show you before we get into this, and uh, it's basically some stuff to do with setting up your video and sound. So I'm going to go along here and just uh, delete this so we have a nice clean line. It's not exactly in line with uh, our video, but that's okay. I'm going to show you a couple of things here. We're going to light up this. I highlight that. And we want to move this whole video, and you do this when you actually open, a, open up a video um, session that's ready to start. And we're going to go to Spot. I'm going to click back on this, okay, and it says, uh, this is our minutes and time, so this is our spot dialog, minutes and seconds, bars, beats, etc. And we want minutes and seconds, and we're going to move this video to 60 minutes, okay, and as you can see there, it's 69 minutes, the whole thing. I'm going to click OK. Now, as you can see, that's actually shifted that right up here, and that's what we want. So, if I stretch it out you can see it's set right at 60 minutes. Now the reason we do this is because when you have film you want things to line up uh, in sync when you're doing a, a film. Um, you want to make sure that any sound effects and the beginning of musical compositions and things that are in the film are uh, flowing nicely and everything's in sync. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you have the correct time, uh, for, uh, time rate and the, um, um, the uh, bit rate. Sorry. I'm going to change this one here from full quality to, uh, yeah, best performance is good. Uh, or you can also go draft if you want to. Now, um, if you import your video and it's these, this little one here is red and this one's not, it's basically because the frame rate of the film that you have here is not the same um, as your session settings. So what would happen is, I'll show you this quickly, we go to session under setup, and come down here and here's your time code. So if I change this to say 25 frames, you immediately see that this goes red and it's telling me it's, it's not going to line up, it's not correct. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to 24. There we are, it's back to normal. Okay, and that's fine. So we've moved our whole session to 60 minutes. And the reason we do this is when we have music, as you'll see shortly, um, here's our beginning of our track, right at the very beginning. Once we have music, uh, come into that, we can make sure that we have, if I'm going to do some recording, I might want to start here, you know, two bars back or here, and it's going to give me a chance to do a pre-roll in for recording, so it gives me a time to be prepared and then do a counting as well. So if I go back to say here, so two bars, um, you know, that gives me plenty of time, it gives me a bit of an eight, eight count to come in and start recording. Okay, now what about the rest of the footage, uh, the uh, the data and stuff that we have here. Okay, what I'm going to do, go to piano, and I'm going to go down to pads, 
and I'm going to hit shift alt like that and again I'm going to set 60 for this all right and click OK and you can see there that it's put this all these musical frames in line with the video which is great it saves me a whole lot of time I don't have to drag and shift anything okay it just puts it all in line however you'll notice now that um, the music is not in sync so if I start my video it's way out okay so you can see that there um, what we're going to do we want to pull all this in line with the beginning of uh, our, our track here so I want to make it about there we still have nice clean cuts I don't want to cut any more of this it gives me plenty of time for everything to come in uh, but now this time I'm going to move it to grid okay I'm going to make sure you take this off because if it stays on spot you're going to keep getting that dialogue box come up and it's going to drive you mad so I don't want this one in I'm just going to go from here I'll just click that normally and then I'm going to hold down shift and alt there we are it's, I don't know why it's moving this, it shouldn't be moving that, but I can undo that. Uh, okay, I guess I'm just going to have to do it this way. Okay, I'm going to highlight all that. All right. There we are. Highlighting all of that. I'm not highlighting my video frame because I don't want my video frame moving from where it is. Okay, I'll just shrink this down, move along. Let's shrink it down. There we are. So there's our starting point. Now, I'm going to drag all this right up to here. Uh, let's save there because that's about where I want the video to start. Reason being is because if we uh, do a little, we want to maybe have some time for an intro there or something like that. And you'll notice that it starts. At, and we'll start it here. Let's see what that looks like. So it's definitely on time. So that's looking pretty good. And generally speaking, um, I think some of this uh, sound is probably a little bit out. So I want to, uh, I'm gonna go into this one stretch him out. I'm, by the way, to move quickly, I'm using R and T to zoom in and out. You can see all this is off, so everything's highlighted. I actually want to bring it over just one more to there. Okay, and we're going to trim him all up a little bit, make it look nice, and all that's trimmed all over the place. You may find that some of this have, may have jumped out, but it shouldn't have because it's all quantizing, right? So that's that one there. I'm going to check this one here now. Let's see how close we are to this. Okay, so that's a little bit over. Let's go back to here. And that should be a little better. Yeah, it's looking a little better. This one's probably not long enough. Let's go in here. I want to stretch that out a bit more. It's okay when you're doing MIDI to keep these um, a little bit longer and overlapping into the next one. So the next one starts while this one ends. If you're sort of way back here, you'll notice a very big difference. Uh, so when you're doing harmonies uh, for strings, music, things like that, allow a little bit of overlap. You know, it, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you can also change the um, release settings in your um, tools here. So here's mine. I can go to, um, okay, that's on mute. I don't want to mute that. I want to take them all off and have them all free. Okay. So I can go here and here's my release. So it's a really long release. Um, it's for my wave sound. Okay. Um, I can also go into here. This is using Spitfire, of course. And I can control my release here. Okay. Make a little bit longer. So the longer that your release goes for, um, the more sort of bleed it allows for the other note to come in. Okay. So you're not having sharp cutoffs and drop offs especially when you're running high-powered um, MIDI um, and sound engines like this. Uh, Spitfire is a very big sound engine. It takes a lot, okay? But we'll go into that a little bit later. For now, I just want to make sure that I'm all lined up, okay? Um, this one here, let's have a look at this. Okay, so that's way off. I'm going to have to come back and fix that one. 
So I'll see if I mute it here, I might be able to... No, I'm going to have to mute it right from the control, uh, which was this one, I think. Okay, so I'm going to come back and fix that one up later. I just want to make sure that all the rest of these are relatively um, running on time, okay? That they're all aligned, that we have proper alignment here. So you can see in this one, actually, I'm going to try and shut that other noise off. It's uh, horns as well by the sound of it. I was like, we can go in and re-mute what I had before. Uh, it's number five, I think, wasn't it? Let's have a look. Yeah, I think it was number five. Okay, so... We're having a look at our orchestra strings track. At the moment, it's MIDI. Okay, there's our orchestra strings. I'm going to bring that down. Now you can see that uh, what I might actually do too, actually, with this, what track have we got? It's uh, number four. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to solo our big strings. Okay. So that way we only have this track working and we can actually hear where it's up to. I don't want that. Now you're hearing this joint, I'll just show you this because it's interesting. Um, different MIDI engines can work different ways and depending on what power you have in your computer and things like that uh, can really make a difference. So you'll see here, I have a short release on these big strings. Short release means that it, it ends very quickly, there's not a big drop off and it doesn't keep ring, lingering on and, and that sort of thing. So um, it kind of, once I take my hands off the keys when I'm playing that particular note, it, it pretty much releases quickly but doesn't stop dead. So it has that nice kind of changeover. So you can hear that. If I want to bleed that in a little bit more, the reason I keep these a little bit shorter on the really long harmonic stuff is because it needs that break up space. So you can hear the difference there. It's more like they're using the bow and then they're pulling it back the other way as they're playing these two. Um, whereas where I had it before, you could clearly hear that stopping can clearly hear that change between notes, you know, and I I might keep it that way for now. I'm just going to have a listen to everything and see how it sounds at the end. So let's go to this one. We'll take my, uh, my solo off so I can hear my pads. I'm about to play my pads here. Let's solo this one. Let's go back to the beginning of this. Let's have a listen. So you can see from the end of this, there's actually quite a long... Now, this, what's happening here is actually different. We have a pretty quick release as before. It lingers on a little bit more, but what's happening here is a very slow attack, okay? This is where your attack comes in. And uh, I just want to bring this up a little bit, and bring this forward, bring this one back maybe, let's see. There might be a kin to other ones as well. Let's go up here, yeah, they're a little bit more in line. Yeah. Uh, and just go through and just check all your, where they all come to. You want to make sure that these changes that are happening are not out of step or out of sync with changes of the other harmonic tracks here, the harmony tracks, I mean here. Okay, so looking at this now, what I want to do, let's go back in and we'll play it. Now you're seeing this one's actually starting about here, right? Um, quite a fair way into the uh, the note that's been written. Now, if I wanted to change that and make that quicker, and make it attack quicker, you'd be looking at, hang on, I'll just minimize this. 
we're going to our track here, which is our hollow waves. It's a pad. Okay, let's see if I can. Okay, this one's not going to play. Let's have a look. Uh, my pads. So I'm playing this pad here. Just playing it. Now the reason, okay, I'm hitting the key now. So you can see that it's very slow to start taking off, so I'll hit the key now. So it's a good two or three seconds before it actually kicks in. And the reason that is, is because this attack here is very slow. If I want to bring that down, I'll bring the other side down because they're running on two engines. And it's 4.9, that's 2.5, so let's bring this down a little bit more, 2.5. Uh, almost there, there we are. Now you're going to notice it'll come in quicker. It's still slow response at the very beginning, so it's still a very slow attack. But the build-up from the attack to the highest point of attack and before the decay sets in is um, a little quicker than it was before. Yeah, so I might even keep that and let's see how it sounds. Yeah, not bad. It's still very slow. It's going to be, if I wanted to really bring that back, I would um, go in here and I would change. I could really, uh, the decay is quite short. I would also pull back the um, sustain on both sides and then we'd have uh, something quite quick. Okay, but I'm not going to change the settings too much at the moment because I still want to hear what it sounds like with uh, the rest of it. Okay. So I'm going to hear what it sounds like with everything except those strings of those short um, staccato sounds. Here we go. Okay, so you can see it's coming along, but I'm definitely going to have to um, increase and shorten these uh, because I need to, what I need to do is, if you wanted to, you could put markers in. Um, and you could put markers right along where um, one starts and the other stops if you want to, you know what I mean? So that way, as you can see, these here are not lined up, okay, they're quite a fair distance away. Um, another part of the reason it's going to sound a little bit funny is because of the difference in attack and the difference in release times that we've set for these particular sound engines. I hope that makes it a bit clearer for you. I hope that helps. Um, so what we can do, uh, if I want to put in a marker, I'm just going to hit on my number pad on my, on my keyboard. It's going to hit the enter on the, on the keypad there and it comes up with the location. So I can put... Um, uh, note one or note uh, two begin, you know, something like that. And that sets a little orange line, the yellow line there when I move off it. Okay. And then I can come to the next one. So I can actually come in here and hopefully my little yellow line will be there somewhere. That doesn't seem to be. Where's it gone? Okay, it seems to be hard to see on here. That's unfortunate. If we go in, we can see that we're at uh, there. So if I come into, it should be where the blue line is. Okay, so it's still not showing it, unfortunately. It doesn't show it in here. Isn't that unfortunate? So I'll bring it about there. Let's see if we can get a bit closer here. Uh, here's my, no, okay. So we're pretty much right on 18.04.2.240. So let's go to 18... What was it? 18.02. So 
So if we come down to 1802 here, or was it 1804? Let's go back and have a look. Okay, so it was 1804-2, so it'd be uh, 1804, 1804 bars. Uh, the second measure, and 240, I'm not sure what that 240 is. I don't get into protocols that much, but I do follow it a lot. Okay, so 1804, 240. So we go up here, and we've got 1801, 1802, and we just follow it along. Let's bring it in a little bit. There's 1804, 2. 1802, 2, So this is the line that we want to bring these back to. Bring these back to here, and I want to extend those to there. And that way, that should actually sink a little bit more. Much better. And so I can keep going on and putting in uh, all my markers to make sure everything is lining up better. And I am lining up to, uh, we should be lining up to the piano here actually to, um, or you can line up to these ones, line all your harmonics up together. Uh, the next one is, let's have a look, next one is about, well let's say, that one, there's a crossing over, and they're crossing over for a reason. So why don't we just put it here, and that is at 1807, that's uh, note 3. Note 3. So we'll just do that. You can call it note three, change three, whatever you want to call it. I'll just use those because I know what I'm I know what I'm talking about. So if you put in one where you know what you're talking about and your um, customers or whatever, if you're working on a project knows what you're talking about, then you'll be fine. So we're talking 1807 1807 So we'll go in here. There's 1807, so I can put it there relatively. And go 1807 That's where we were there. Zero, so it's here, right there. So they're actually on the right spot. These will move up a little bit. There we are. Okay, so there we are. So they should fall in nicely now. And you, like I said, you can keep going along and doing that um, to each one. One thing to be careful of before I close this down, because we're getting to 20 minutes, before I close this all down now, um, Depending on the instruments, you can, and depending on what you're playing, you can sometimes sort of have one set up and move that straight to the other. But as you can see here, I've used a different um, sort of melodic or harmonic movement for each particular instrument. So I'm not going to touch each of these. Each of these has to remain as they are. I can't just sort of take this and copy that or anything like that. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm just going to keep it as it is. So anyway, that's our session for now. I'm going to save that session. And uh, in the next lesson, we'll come and have a look at uh, a little bit more, make sure the, um, the next lot of strings are all tied up. Once we've done all that, we can move into our engineering and we can start uh, cleaning the whole thing up just using a couple of very simple pads. We'll use some plugins. We'll have a look at everything and uh, start building it from okay. there. I hope that's been uh, very helpful for you, this lesson. Um, my name's Shannon. I'm at Audio Energy. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, you can like me on Facebook. You can like me on Twitter. Check out my um, website as well. It's audionrg.com. Uh, you can just Google search. It comes up pretty much straight away. Uh, I hope that's been really helpful for you this week. Got more coming next week, so stick around and let everyone know. Cheers.